So, it's been a little bit, and I'm sorry for that. Admittedly, I have been a little bit distracted with the Hindsight series. It was a very spur-of-the-moment idea, but one that I feel like could bring some new eyes on to the channel. And just in general, I've been dropping the ball a little bit. It was refreshing to do something a little bit different rather than just, you know, being like, here, all the time, franchise, let's go. So, it's been nice to take a little bit of a break, but we are back again. A reminder, however that this is still going to be our final season with the Golden Knights, unless I go through some extra seasons on Twitch. Maybe we even hand over control of the franchise to the AI and see what the AI does with the super team like this. There are some interesting options, but for now, this is looking like the final season, because yet again, we are in that spot where year in and year out, we are going to be extremely competitive. So now is as good a time as any to call it quits. This is the squad that will start the year. The, sta uh, the stacked top six that you have, uh, you know, become, uh, you know and love at this point. The bottom six as well will be interesting. I'm giving Verbata and Fedorov, two guys who have had some decent point totals in the past, a chance on that third line with Dykehouse. And of course, defensively, the new additions of Nickel and Hannon, both 20 years old. I'll be really intrigued to see what they can do. The goaltending tandem is still Vasilevsky with Gervais Schwenard. Down in the AHL, of course, there are some players to pay attention to. And really, there's quite a few more that will be interesting to pay attention to, at least in terms of prospects and how they continue to develop, which is why it makes stepping away from a series like this so difficult. That said, that said, a few of you were leaving comments as well as like, oh, do this series next, do this series next. If you haven't checked out the update video that I dropped over a week ago, check that out. It talks about what's coming up on the channel moving forward. So if you haven't checked that out, feel free to. Uh, there may be polls attached to that video. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, you know, it, it's, it's important. I'm not saying check out everything I do, but if I release an update video, oftentimes it's, it's important in terms of relevant information with what's going on on the channel moving forward. So if you haven't checked that out, feel free to. But as far as what happens, again, this series, what happens, you know, what are we doing next after the, I always want to say the seed cattle, but after the Golden Seals series ends, we, we, got, we got most of it. Most of it figured out. But for now, for now, our focus lies solely, solely on the fact that I did not hire more scouts like I was supposed to. <laughs> I always forget. Ah, I always forget. Especially in a series like this where it's like, come on, what's, what's even the point? Does it even matter? I mean, we have one draft left. I think we can afford to have a bad draft, but son of a... Bitch. Okay, so we need an NHL Atlantic scout. I think it's just pro scouts that we need. I'm still going to set, uh, set this up. Screw it. So who are the highest? Oh, God in heaven. All right. A bunch of C's. A bunch of C's. Who has the best names? Natasha Beckett. Why not? Natasha, come on down. You're the next scout for the Vegas Golden Knights, at least until I can fire you for a higher rated scout. Who else do we got? Rich Bentley. Sure, sure, you know, like the vehicle. Uh, Tony Cappy, Chad Genoway, Sam Long, Dimitrakos. Uh, Marion Rositas, who we'll say is totally not related to the Rositas we have on defense, and it's fine. Uh, Veronica with a K, gotta sign you up. I like the alliteration. And, uh, yeah, that should be fine. That should be fine. Let's at least get enough scouts into the system. I knew... After having it been, you know, having you know, having a big of a break as we did in between recording episodes, that I would forget something, I did. But that's okay. You, you know, you've come to expect that at this point. I don't know when I'm going to set them up. <laughs> Probably, uh, I'll be lazy enough to not. It depends on when everybody signs. So we ended up losing the Buffalo. We played them again in the next week. Thank you, Natasha. Do we not have one more scout that we're waiting for? Yeah, there you are, Rich. 1-2-0 and oh on the season. Say goodbye to 60 wins. That's not going to happen, clearly. Clearly not going to happen. Elijah Lackey has five points in three games. See, it's because we don't have a proper scouting staff. That's clearly the reason. Right, so what do we got? 
Uh, one of you two get to move to the Atlantic. Who does it want to, you know, who, who wants to do that? You do, Veronica. Congratulations. Off to the East Coast you go. It's lovely this time here. It's not. It's not. As a matter of fact, there's uh, nearly a foot of snow on the ground outside right now. Kind of waiting to just randomly lose power. Like, like it happens, you know. It just happens. So that'll be fun if I do. You'll never hear this. So if you're hearing this now, then hooray for me. All was not lost. Now, again, since we have pro scouts, which granted, Fog of War is not on. We don't need pro scouts anymore. That's right. There will still be... <sighs> Fuck it. It's fine for now. Uh, there will still be the debate over whether or not Fog of War should be on or off, but I do think with how much we typically check, it's probably better for it to be off for a YouTube series. That's not to say I don't like it. I really do like the addition of Fog of War. But in terms of people always being like, oh, well, let's make sure to check this guy, make sure to check this guy after the draft, or you know, see how good this free agent actually was, it's kind of more helpful to just know immediately after, right? To just be able to check it instantly and get it out of the way. Oh, boy, I'm just looking at our record and crying a little bit inside. <laughs> Again, I don't know if we're going to win 60 games this year. Kind of surprised we won as many games as we did last year. And, of course, it ended in a playoff disappointment. That said, we might still maybe possibly potentially have a chance here. It could happen. That's all I'm saying. Something okay, you know what? I'm getting I'm getting kind of worried. It's still probably a little bit too early to stop the sim as Andrew Whitaker goes down to injury down in the AHL. Now, I can't sit here and pretend that I remember what the hell I was talking about after getting up and letting my dog out, who surprisingly uh, enjoys the snow. So it's been a little bit. I don't remember what the hell I was talking about. It's fine, though. Let's sim to December 1st, and then we'll take a look at the stats and maybe make some changes if we have to do so. Sound good? Cool. Because <laughs> otherwise, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, 7 and 8, though. Not exactly an inspiring start. Chicago's done a tad bit better as Whitaker is back from injury. Not exactly an inspiring start from the team. I don't know. Since we're here, since we're here, maybe we'll take a look now. As Paula do has the nerve to be pissed about ice time. Oh, Jesus, Marion Hosa. That is... That is a problem. That... That is a major problem. Wow. How good has Coburn been? Really good down in the AHL. Well, pretty good at least. Uh, we will give them time to sort out that issue, but that is probably our biggest issue. Defensively, Rositas, of course, he's not a point getter. Despite being a two-way, he's not a point getter. So weird. Provorov, nine points in 16 games. Bobrovsky, doing okay, but not quite to the same extent. Uh, and Derek Hannon likes to take penalties. We'll keep an eye on that. Forward-wise, oh my god, Marvin Mason has 11 points in 16 games. That's not too bad. 12 points for Glass, only 8 points for Russell Clausen. I think it's time for that top line to be switched. Although, Fotinos, Goldobin, and Lackey have been doing very well. So what do we do in terms of that top line to not disrupt what's going on on the second line? That's where things get to be a bit tricky. 6 points there, 6 points there, 6 goals there. Right. We need to spark something with that top line. And to be honest, I don't know what the answer is. I think we'll just do the simple flipping of Klassen and Mason. And we'll hope that solves it. So clearly, two major issues right now are plaguing the team. Our goaltending has been abysmal. And our top line is not exactly playing up to their best ability. So, we'll keep an eye on this, but to see this team at 7-9-1 midway through November, at least now up to 8-9-1, it's not exactly what I had in mind, because it's not as if we're significantly weaker than we were last year. Although, there's still plenty of time. As I absolutely, and more than likely will, have to take another swig of the Arnold Palmer half and half iced tea lemonade, for those who aren't familiar. Uh, I feel like I might be getting sick. It's like a little bit of a sore throat, but I feel like it could be... Put it this way. 
I accidentally bit my tongue, as most people do. I don't know who intentionally bites their tongue. But uh, I bit my tongue the other day, and I feel like I've developed kind of a sore throat from it. It's not brutal, but if I talk like I normally do in these videos where it's just, here's a wall of sound, yeah, it, it starts to bother me. So that might not happen. The good news is, uh, the division is still quite close. Nobody in this division is amazing this year. Lackey's doing very well. Has the goaltending turned things around? Vassy, absolutely not. Oh, Jesus Christ, fellas. You got no excuse playing behind this defense either. Rositas has three points, is a plus seven. Provorov's been all right, but Brovsky's getting more points. Gertsen's been fine. That third pairing needs to uh, needs to change, though. In terms of who could be called up, Matty Kerman is pretty much the only one, but he's not exactly ready for prime time. So I believe Gertsen has power play time. He does. So that's going to be the change because I don't want to bump down Bobrovsky because he's a ridiculous point producer. So we're going to go with Rosita's pro over off Bobrovsky, Hannon, Nickel, and Gertsen. And as far as the forwards are concerned, 11 points now for Klaassen, 14 for Glass, 16 for Mason. So it appears as though they're starting to turn it around. Eight points there, nine points there, only six points for Verbata. And the fourth line is gelling relatively well. So, much like we did before, let's make that quick flip of Fedorov and uh, Verbata. Dykow's still at center. And we'll see if that fixes anything. I am going to try to give the personnel that we currently have in the NHL as many opportunities as they need to get things going. Right now, though, it's not looking very good on that front, is it? So... <laughs> Let's see what happens. January 1st might very well be the target date. And we'll see what happens from there as we do get a trade offer. Uh, no. I don't even know. I don't even remember who Douglas is. I'm going to guess he's a medium six. If not, then I should have done that. But I'm not even going to bother looking. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Coburn goes down to injury. He'll be out for a month. So it's a fairly big loss for the AHL squad. Good thing is they do have ridiculous, ridiculous goaltending depth for the most part, at least in comparison, right? Orlando Staples also goes down to injury. It would be nice if we could avoid this problem. All right, speaking of problems, we have one win, make it two. There we go, okay, it looks better. Looks better, right? Just like that, that's all we needed. That's all we needed. Just win a game and don't look as bad as we've been this season. Very frustrating. I don't remember. Staples is a forward. Gotcha. I think. Who was in for him? Volchenkov's the lower lead. It must have been Rankin, right? Yeah. Actually, in fairness, Rankin's the lower lead too. It must have been Rankin, though, based on the ratings. It's the only thing I can think of. Or it was Riley Nash. I don't remember if it was Riley Nash or not. It might not have been. Uh, Staples, though, congratulations. You don't get to play. And we'll uh, flip you with Rankin because I can't remember who is playing where. It's fine, though. Don't worry about it. Everything is going to be okay unless we cannot stop picking up injuries. Oh, my God. Now Marvin Mason's out for a month as well. Okay. This is going swimmingly. The team is struggling, especially in terms of goaltending. And now Marvin Mason goes down to injury. So it's going to have to be, more than likely, Dubinsky or Vykov. Uh, let's see. Dubinsky's doing well. Former third-round pick. Let's give him the opportunity. Or not, we'd be over the cap, which means Paul Ledoux is playing forward or Bobrovsky is one or the other. So, you know, that's exactly the move we're going to make. Paul Ledoux, congratulations. You get to play defense. You get to be Bobrovsky. And Bobrovsky gets to be Mason, which might not work out, although Bobrovsky is our best offensive defenseman. Is it insane? Yes, but maybe, just maybe it'll work. As uh, congratulations to Mr. Ledoux. There you go. 
in the lineup. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's see how things go for us moving forward as we continue to try and get back to at least a 500 record. We're currently 16 and 17. If you add up the total losses, now back to a 500 record. Can we get the win? Jesus Christ, 8 to 2 over Chicago. All right, we're back into the positives. We have a chance. Just don't blow it in the next few games here against Toronto and Anaheim before we end the month. Let's see what happens as we do beat the Leafs. Can we beat the Ducks? The opportunity is still there to make something happen. So, and we do beat the Ducks as well. We've been on a nice little run here. Let's keep it going. No need to make changes just yet. We'll wait until Marvin Mason comes back to take a look at the lineup. No real reason to uh, no real reason to botch it. Keep the team strong. Keep this going. We're doing well. Vasty's happy with his playtime, and if he's the goalie who's leading the way, then I'm happy with his playtime. Because yeah, we we need this desperately. Yablonski, absolutely not. I refuse. I refuse to get rid of Yablonski. I don't know who Yablonski is. I can admit, I don't know who he is, but it's okay. There we go. Marvin Mason. Marvin Mason is back. So, let's go best lines yet again. Nichols up to an 81, which is nice. So the team would be Rosita's Provorov, and we'd make that flip yet again. So let's take a look at the team as we've had it for the majority of the season. First up, goaltender Zassi is starting to battle his way back. He's still been brutal. Same with Gervais Schwenard. It will make sense to take both of them into the postseason with us. But as far as who the starter is going to be, I don't know. It would make sense to take both into the playoffs because I'm all right with losing Vasilevsky for nothing and then we sign Gervais Schwenard at the end of this season. But, I mean, because let's be honest, I mean, yeah, we could trade Vasilevsky and just go with Gervais Renard, but, you know, that brings in extra picks, and if Gervais Renard's bad, maybe Vasti can do well. It's a debatable point, at least. Rositas has six points and is a plus 18, which is pretty damn sweet. Provorov's doing well. Uh, Provorov's doing really well. Hannon's still taking a lot of penalties. Nichols been okay, and Gerritsen's been okay. So, you know, that's looking better. Only thing we might want to check is Hannon's... Uh, fight consistency, which I don't know. Here, let me look. I, I don't remember. Am I allowed to see how many fights he's had? It should be. Not from here, but you can see it from the player stats. Uh, the league-wide player stats, of course, because that makes sense. Let's take a look here. So Marvin Mason, 19 points in 33 games, which is okay, but not up to his standard. Cody Glass only has 27 points, and Russell Clausen with 26. That top line... Is broken. Potinos is doing well. Godobin's doing well. And, yeah, I mean, that second line's been performing like our top line. Fedorov, I, you know what? I mean, first things first. That's happening. They deserve to be the top line, so they will be. Again, Mason, 19 points in 33 games, 27 for Glass, and 26 for one Russell Clausen. As far as that third line is concerned... Fedorov with 16 points, 17 for Dyko, 16 for Verbata. Sounds about right. Plus minus is all at least okay. 19 points for Letty, 17 for Bembridge, and 16 for Lindgren. It's just that second line dropping the ball. Well, the now second line dropping the ball. We'll see if they can start to turn things around here soon. Aside from that, I need to take out Tyler Bradford, but I'll probably just leave the Wolves as they are in terms of having the best team possible and we'll see how that works out for us so we're doing uh we're doing okay we're doing okay i'm feeling you know somewhat optimistic i mean that's the thing the record's doing well right i mean we might have some players who are still underperforming that top line comes to mind but overall it's not a disastrous situation right right we have a chance <laughs> I don't know, it's it's very interesting to see this team, and of course, we know what this team is capable of, despite the fact that we failed in the playoffs last year. It's more so, do we look to make changes as we approach the deadline to try and change things up? But, 
I mean, the squad is basically as good as we can make it with the morale system on. Of course, otherwise it would be very problematic in terms of trying to balance everything out with the power play. And hell, we've seen Russell Claussen complain about ice time when he was on the power play penalty kill. <laughs> like, he was on everything and he was still complaining about ice time. So, it's kind of a weird one. That's all right. We're going to make it through this. 29, 18, and 3 as of February 1st. The February, the February. We are six points clear of Calgary. Tremendous. So, despite some struggles this year, the Pacific Division seems to have finally wound down and isn't as cutthroat as it was. Bassi at a 9.13, Gervais Chouinard at a 9.17. Right. Defensively, no complaints about Rositas, no complaints about Bobrovsky. Uh, Bobrovsky Provorov, no complaints about Bobrovsky either. Derek Hannon's been... Uh, he's been kind of mad. Nickel as well. Hannon and Nickel, not exactly killing it. Forward-wise, 45 points in 50 games for Fotinos, 52 points in 50 games for Goldobin, and 50 and 50 for Elijah Lackey. Second line, Marvin Mason is broken. 21 points in 41 games. Glass on 31 points and only 30 points for Russell Claussen. Our top line, our best line consistently over the past few years is broken. And I don't know what the hell we're going to do to fix it. Now, Fedorov has 16 points in 50 games. That's not quite where we want these guys. Again, the closer to 30 points, the better. I mean, it's okay, but it's not great. And you would expect, with the second line not producing, as they could be, that their scoring would be a little bit higher. Kind of like the fourth line. Letty on 19, 17 for Bembridge, 16 for Lindgren. <sighs> the only line I'm really happy with is that top line. And I think we'll try that out. I mean, Dyke House has been labeled as the Cody Glass replacement anyway. Might be the right time to try that. Why not? See if it can spark something. But that is probably the biggest story for this team right now is that our top line, our best three players, have not been developing I think the plan here is to sim to March 1st, and perhaps, perhaps this episode won't go down exactly as planned. Maybe we'll stop things around the deadline, leave it up to you guys as to whether or not you think maybe a deal should be made. And if so, you know, we'll stop it here, let you have your input on that. Next episode, we do what we have to do and sim through our first round matchup. That's the problem. We're in a playoff spot. We're going to make the playoffs, barring a brutal collapse. We're just not as dominant as we've been previously. And that's for a variety of different reasons, unfortunately. If it was as simple as saying, the goaltending is terrible, then that would be fine. But it's not. Old Rich Nakar. 23 years old, me a low 6 defense, no thanks. I'm good. <laughs> I am good. No, thank you. I will pass. Thank you very much. Landon Strong goes down hurt for the Chicago Wolves. Again, we'll just go best lines for them. No problem. No problem. You blunt, man, people really want this Yablonski guy. All the more reason as to uh, why we won't get rid of him, because why the hell would we? No, if he is that in demand, it means he's worth keeping. That's what that means. So let's see what the squad's looking like one week from now, as we will be just shy of 40 wins at best. I'm not getting rid of Yablonski. Get out of my face. Don't want it. Don't want it. Don't need it. Don't care. Tried to fight off that yawn. Couldn't do it. That's okay. We're going to make it through this. Sore throat. Tired. Doesn't matter. We will march on. Damn it. I will show the fight that my team needs to show. As we... Do we beat Winnipeg? Yes, we do. Not bad. 39-19-4. Starting to look like the squad that we are capable of being. We are 12 points clear with a game at hand on Calgary. 
So barring an absolutely horrific collapse, we're going to make the playoffs. 20 games left in this season. It's all but a guarantee. But taking a look at the squad here, just before the deadline. Gervais Schwinnard with a 9-13 and 9-18 for Vasilevsky. So slowly but surely, our two goaltenders have been getting better. The only debate is whether or not it's worth trading Vasilevsky to get something for him, which would only factor in if I continue this like on a Twitch stream or something. So that's the debate. If anything, it's probably safer to just keep both goalies and lose Vasilevsky for nothing. Again, I don't like to end a series by being like, fuck it, let's trade all of our top prospects and picks and make a super team. I don't like doing that. I just don't. But, you know, regardless, the safer move is probably to keep both goaltenders, but the debate over who starts, that is very much up in the air. And I gotta be honest, maybe Gervais Schwinnard, I mean, he might deserve a little bit of a shout, or if Vassie's the starter, it's gonna be a very short leash. Defensively, Rosita's 9 points in the plus 29. Phenomenal. Uh, Provorov, 7 goals, 27 assists in the plus 21. Perfect. Second pairing, Bobrovsky has been great. Hannon has gotten it together. Terrence Nichols, still not phenomenal, but he's been okay. And Taylor gertson has been strong. So down in the AHL, again, Matty Kerman is the only guy I'd consider calling up. And I believe, I believe Chicago had a half-decent record, did they not? Where are the Wolves? They're in a playoff spot, so the fact that it's plus minus, which again, terrible stat, but in game one of the few things we have to go off of, the fact that it's plus minus was as low as it is, uh, pretty surprising. Also, not to mention, we have no cap space right now. We are up against the wire. And in terms of any kind of late signing to bring in and save the day, that's not going to happen. So, despite Kerman being amazing, probably still for the best to leave him in the AHL, Hannon and Nickel are the guys. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm good. I'm good with what we got there. Speaking of uh, late call-ups, because we've seen that impact the series, uh, aside from Lalonde, aside from Antoine Lalonde, former first-round pick, low elite, a 79. He could be signed. He could be. That wouldn't be necessarily the worst option in terms of signing him and having him be... Hopefully, what could put us over the edge for that uh, for that playoff push and the playoff effort in general, if we wanted to change up oh, what the bottom six looks like. That said, the bottom six hasn't been that bad this year, and we still have plenty of other options in the AHL. Let's take a look at the forwards here, as Fotinos is doing very, very well. 59 points in 62 games. You have Victor Goldobin on 64 points in 62 games. And Elijah Lackey, 34 and 34, 68 points in 62 games. Good stuff. Second line, Mason, starting to get it a little bit. 35 points in 53 games, still not amazing. And I mean, obviously what he's accomplished in the past three years, that is so incredibly disappointing. Jeremy Dykehouse on a decent 28 points, but still not amazing. Russell Clausen on 46 points in 62 games, so he started to wake up a little bit. Fedorov, 20 points on the year, 38 points for Glass, and uh, 21 for Verbata. I think already we look to make this change, and I know Glass is really good at center, but I want to try something different just to spark something, if anything. So again, 20 points there. We have 21 points there. Letty doing okay. Again, the bottom six hasn't been bad. Bottom six hasn't been terrible. I think I am going to end it here. More than likely, I don't see us making any trades. It's just more a matter of line combinations and potential call-ups. Maybe siding that one dude, but down in the AHL, we do have the likes of Vyacheslav Bikov, 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 who is NHL caliber in a few ways. Having a pretty good season. Brendan Dubinsky as well. Sven Forstrom. We have options in terms of how to set up this team heading into the playoffs. It's just, what do we think? Despite the fact we're in first place, let's make sure we're all on the same page. Let's figure this out. We'll be back with the next episode. What could be, technically, the main series finale outside of being like, hey, let's vote, you know, Channel Hall of Fame. Uh, next episode will be the first round of the playoffs, and if we lose, that's it. So, it's going to be very, very interesting. We don't know how much time we have left in this series. 
Thank you guys for watching. Again, I apologize for the wait, but we should be back to the regular uploads. And again, hopefully next time I won't be feeling like I'm starting to get sick and I'll actually be able to record a longer video. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for the support. Check out everything in the description if you haven't already. And if you have, do it again. Until next time, have a good one. I'll see you then.